Vanessa. Michael. Today we're going to talk about Annandale. So Annandale, Virginia has been overlooked for many, many years. Yeah. It's also not just Route 50 because most people think that that's pretty much what it is. So there's a lot more to it. It's a very thriving community, very diverse population, and it's actually held on to his, its historic character despite significant growth there. So the location of Annandale, it's west of D.C. Uh, part of it is inside the Beltway. I'd say like two-thirds of it is inside the Beltway. A third of it is kind of outside the Beltway. Uh, Little River Turnpike is one of the main roads here that goes east-west through here. And it's home to Inova Fairfax Hospital and the Northern Virginia Community College's Annandale campus. Which is a really nice campus. Yeah. Yeah, great location, too. It's right off 495. Okay, cool. All okay. right. All right, the history in Annandale is actually so cool. So in the 1600s, it was a tobacco farm, probably like much of Northern Virginia yeah. was back then. Uh, in Civil War times, the troops actually spilled over here from the Battle of Manassas. It was the second battle, but they spilled yeah. over a little bit. Um, and then in 1906, they built the railroad, and that really helped Annandale grow and have the towns around it sprout up. So D.C. expanded in the 1950s and people started looking for what they would call bedroom communities and places to live and 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 then you know commute into dc uh and so that's when a lot of the building started happening was the 1950s so fun fact in 1685 uh at the crossroads of little river annandale road and columbia pike was the indian trading post and you can actually see like photos of this on or like renderings of this on the chamber of commerce's website um, and it's very cool um, because the, they had the 1954 version of it, which it was a Annandale variety store at that same location. So That's like so cool. 300 years later, it was still remaining a great place as like kind of a trading post, yeah. you know, place to go. Just, you know, the crossroads of all those three areas. That's so cool. I think that's such a fascinating fact and like... I know, I yeah. Know. They didn't have the 68, but they like discussed it. They showed like the map of what it looked like, which of course it was very desolate. There was nothing there. Yeah. But they were like, the trading post is here. And then they show you in 1954 that it was the variety, the variety store, which is awesome. It was so cool. All right. Want to do yeah. real estate? Yes. All right. Yeah. I Knock yourself out. I love yeah. Annandale real estate. It mm -hmm. really is. There's such a plethora of homes. Uh, and a lot of mid-century focus in Annandale. Definitely. Um, especially you can see the spillover on the uh, Falls Church Annandale border of mid-century. Yeah. Um, super cool. So uh, the neighborhood, Strathmead Springs, Woodburn, Wakefield, Annandale Terrace, um, there's some really good mix of single-family homes, townhomes, and condos. Um, and a lot of the mid-century development happened because a lot of the development was in the 50s and 60s. Right, right. Um, you know, and so uh, you can really see that influence. And there's been a pretty steady building, um, uh, uh, you know, to the present time. And then also, uh, you know, the 70s contemporaries, and then you get into the 1980s colonials. So there are a lot of them there. They also have been built out quite yeah. a bit. Um, so you'll still see a lot of them. Uh, Single-family homes, ranchers, uh, ramblers started around the 500s. Uh, and prices climb steadily into around the one million range. But what's great is you can find a home in any price point in Annandale. Yeah, I mean the supply is. It's not like there's a few in the five hundreds and then everything else is the eight hundreds. To like, it's very evenly distributed in price point. So you can find something in every single price point there and have a bunch of options. Yeah, my very cool. My clients bought a house uh, on almost an acre of land. Um, and a Rambler, totally renovated, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and I would say Annandale's been, like, overlooked for, me I mean, it's like, just everything around it gets attention, but Annandale doesn't until, like, now. Like, now I'm hearing about it, so. Yeah, and the large know. lots are incredible in Annandale. That's one of the big things that I really love is, it's, you don't see these large lots in other areas. Like, I sold a teardown, um, the house, uh, and it was, the house sold, the land and the teardown sold for four fifty, and somebody built a really big house on yeah. it. Yeah. And it looks beautiful. And, yeah. You know, the house had just reached the end of its life and didn't, you know, it just mm -hmm. was needed to be teared down. It was a two bedroom, one and a half bath house. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it's really cool to see. Which um, makes perfect sense for who the commuter was in the 1950s that bought that house, right? It yeah. was like a family with two kids or whatever and one bathroom was fine for them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. Yeah, and the supply of homes is evenly distributed from the 500s to the million range, which is much different than other areas totally. in D.C. Totally, um, You know, townhouses are four to 500 mm -hmm. um, in most cases. Um, there are some condos in the high 100s for a one-bedroom uh, to the high 300s for three beds. 
uh, you know, so there's a really good range and some of the neighborhoods that do have the condos are mid-century and they're super cool. Yeah. Uh, we sold one that had, um, you know, the wood beam ceiling uh, in the condo. It was super charming. Yeah. And I think like there's, there's mid-century and then there's mid-century, right? So it's like you see places like Holland Hills or places that ha were you know, like a Goodman community where everybody wants these houses. It's yeah. like they're, they're like the you know, highest point of like what everybody thinks of when they think of mid-century, like that Palm Springs house with all the windows. Yeah. These are mid-century too. And it's like, they're nothing to stick your nose up at, but they're like you said, like the wood beams and things that over the years, somebody actually might end up removing or changing the flavor of it because they don't recognize it and, and appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. But you've got some really cool like houses there. And, and, you know, I think, I think that lends itself well to like, a community that people should pay attention to. Yeah, and I think people are starting to recognize it, like we said, and it's really getting its heyday now. Right, you know? yeah. And it's so nice because, you know, I always try to encourage people to buy there, and people, I think it was just an unfamiliarity. Yes. And now it's, everybody is starting to live there. There's so much more infrastructure on the commercial side going mm -hmm. in, um, you know, so... Uh, you know, and also there's a lot of notoriety around the food scene. So let's talk about the food scene in Annandale. Okay. Annandale actually has the nickname of Koreatown. It has some of the best Korean restaurants in the DC metro area, hands down. I love going down there. It actually was uh, featured on Lisa Ling's show, Takeout. Um, she did a whole episode on oh, Annandale. Cool. It was really yeah. incredible. Um, and, uh, you know, what's, what I think is so fascinating is that there are over 60 Korean-owned businesses that include bakeries, restaurants, karaoke bars, um, and just a variety of businesses, which I think is so cool. And so most of the uh, uh, establishments in, in uh, Annandale are actually family owned. Um, you know, you could spend the better part of a year eating at all of them and still not make it through all of them. Wow. Um, you know, it's really incredible. And so I love being able to go and spend my money directly with the community and give it back to the community. I'm, I, I try to avoid going to chains as much as possible because I love being able to spend my dollar and give it to uh, the family owned businesses. You better not take Maggiano's away from me. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, most of the food scene is concentrated around the Little River Turnpike area. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not, it's all concentrated there, but for the most part. And so, um, some of my favorite places are the Shilla Bakery, Han Gong, and then Kogia. My favorite my absolute favorite Korean restaurant in the area. It's always busy and on the website they actually tell you to carpool because the parking lot is so small and they are not kidding. Uh, it's totally worth the wait. Even though there is a line, I 100% just stick with it. It's such a great great restaurant and funny we, we I was driving around for almost 15 minutes trying to find parking because I forgot about the carpool rule oh, and man. so yeah it was <laughs> it was really funny. What if you're the person that has all the people in your car? It was still, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you just pray for a parking they spot. They expanded the restaurant at the expense of the parking. They're yeah. Like, You're literally wealthier. just, I felt, I felt like somebody in a parking lot just waiting for somebody to leave, you know? And like, it's just like. That's me at Costco. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's really, uh, there's, you know, and also uh, two of the really great restaurants um, that have like kind of the more hard to find traditional dishes, uh, Chung Hua Wan and Zhang Wan um, are two really great restaurants and they're Chinese Korean. Um, so uh, they were actually noted on a couple of different uh, food websites. Um, so really, really cool. Another another one of uh, my favorite places and is actually in Annandale on the border, and that is Sweetwater Tavern. So I love their salmon salad. It's delicious. Their crab fritters are <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. And their bread, like the bread is like donuts. It is, yeah. They're and like, they're... would you like the bread? Yes, I, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and they're also a microbrewery which yeah. is super cool. Yeah. And their beer is great. You can get growlers. And what's really cool is it's a locally owned um, yes. a chain from a local restaurant group. Yes, correct. Yeah. And their restaurants are absolutely amazing. They are, yeah. yeah. It's consistent yeah. every time you go in. Totally. I've never had a bad experience yeah. there. Yeah, yep. really great. So, and then for grocery stores, you get your typical um, Giant, Safeway, um, and then Aldi, and then also the Lidl, which is technically an Alexandria address, but um, it's right on the border so of Annandale. So anybody who lives in Annandale is going to shop there. And actually, it's my favorite Lidl in the area. I shop there very frequently. Um, so, and then you also have the international grocery stores like H Mart, Kmart, oh, excuse me, Kmart International. The Kmart is long gone from Annandale. Blue, blue light special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and then also you have some more of the regional grocery stores like Ginger Spice, which is also in the Lidl Shopping Center on the border um, of Annandale and Alexandria. Um, such a great place. I love going into that store. And then also you've got Nas Foods Halal Meat and Grocery, which is a really great little grocer. Um, you also have the Farmer's Markets, uh, Mesa District Park. Uh, and also at Wakefield Park. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool at the Mason District Park, and I did not know this, uh, is that there is a Master Gardener plant clinic, uh, and the Master Gardener is there to help with any of your landscaping or vegetable garden issues, flowers, everything. So cool. How to keep the groundhogs away. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get a full education, which is super cool. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, it's really, you know, the there's such a plethora in Annandale um, that, you know, you have so much to choose from, and I think it's just a really cool place, you know, for a food scene, grocery stores, everything. And I love going down there. I shop in Annandale very frequently. All right. Well, now let's talk about some fun. Yeah. Fun in Annandale. So what's there? Well, Wakefield Park is um, is underneath the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources. They have trails, basketball, volleyball courts, tennis courts. There's fields. They have baseball fields, softball fields, and a skate park. There's also bird watching there. So this is like one of the big things because there's recent sightings of different kinds of birds on their website that you can go and check out. Many, many, many woodpeckers were there. Not Woody the woodpecker, but many other woodpeckers <laughs> were there. Uh, several hawks and then the Canadian goose. And I have a fun fact, Michael. Um, do you know what the uh, Wawa logo is comprised of? No. It's a Canadian goose. I had no idea. <laughs> and another fun fact on top of that, um, Wawa is the Native American word for Canadian goose. Yeah. I love Wawa. The more you know. The more you know. <laughs> I love Wawa. I can't pass one without going in. I'm like, yes. <laughs> All right, then there's the Audrey Moore Rec Center. They've got, there's the gym there. They've got fitness classes, uh, camps. They've got all kinds of things, a uh, pool, spa, sauna. There's a pottery lab there, uh, arts and crafts, and also a senior center. So there's kind of something there for all ages. It's really cool. So if your community, like your homeowners association or your condo association doesn't have a pool, there are several membership-based pools which are available for you to join. Uh, there is the Annandale Swim and Tennis Club, there is Broyhill Crest Recreation Club, Camelot Pool, Forest Hollow Swim Club, the Ilda Pool and Swim, and Wakefield Chapel Rec Center all have pools. Uh, the Long Branch Steam Valley Park is a two, has a 2.75 mile trail. It actually starts in Fairfax and then it ends in Annandale. Yeah. There's Eakin Community Park. I hope that's Eakin and not Aiken. It might be Aiken Community Park. They've got tennis, basketball, playgrounds, and trails. Uh, Mason District Park has sports fields, a tot lot. There's an off-leash park and the farmer's market, as we discussed. Um, and then Annandale also has a couple little festival type things. They've got one in the fall, which really is also like Halloween themed. It's got a parade that goes along with it. And then they do National Night Out in August to celebrate first responders. But there's a lot of fun and other events and things and activities that they have for this. And then if you want shopping, you would go to the Mosaic District, which is like it's an outdoor shopping center, got all kinds of stores. And yeah. that's where Sweetwater is, all that good stuff. Um, and then let's uh, talk about kids. So what is there for kids here? Well, the schools here, elementary schools, some go to fifth and some go to sixth. So it's kind of like a little bit different depending on what your elementary school does and what you're zoned for. Poe Middle School is a sixth through eight school though. So everyone ends up going to Poe. The scores on these schools range from three, anywhere from three all the way to an eight. And Annandale High School is a two. Um, and that may sound like to you that it's abysmal, but again, we talk about this in every video. These are great school scores. They are solely based on tests. If you kind of think about the fact that a teacher can teach to a test, they can, I don't want to say manipulate because that's like, that's too strong of a word, but you really can influence these test scores in a way. Now, if you look at the Annandale High School demographics, which is all available on their website, I would venture a guess that the scores are directly correlated to the fact that they, they designate that one third of the population of the high school is classified as an English language learner. So English is not their first language, which means testing is going to be another level of potential, you know, a hurdle, right? So that could also be part of the explanation, which is, you know, why the score is the way it is. So I wouldn't solely go based off school scores when you're looking at it. And I think a lot of people do get kind of wrapped up and stuck in that cycle. Yeah, and talk through your network. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Research the network. Look at the school boards. Yeah. You know, talk to people. I mean, really having a conversation is the best way to yeah, the do other, the research. The other interesting thing is you'll see on great schools that something might have a bad score, but then when you actually look up the school, there's Google reviews for the school, and there yeah. might be dozens of them, hundreds of them that are fours and fives because it's from people who actually go there, right? Yeah. You'll always, the kids will always go on and review their school. Like, they're always happy to go do that, right? Whether yeah. it's good or bad. So you'll, you'll hear directly from kids who go there. Yeah. Um, so Annandale High School has an IB program, but they don't have AP there. And then the Annandale Adams, that is their, uh, their, their mascot. So their sports program, I wouldn't say is as robust as other ones that we've seen in Fairfax County, but they do have a separate website. Like most other high schools that we're seeing, there's football, volleyball, uh, cross country, basketball, swim, dive, field hockey, lacrosse, tennis, track and field, all that good stuff. Um, other stuff for kids, so Mason District um, and Wakefield Parks both, both host something called Arts in the Park, and that's a summer series on Saturdays of just various entertainment. And then nearby, you've got a couple cool things. There's a Sky, Sky Zone Trampoline Park, and then there's also the St. James, which we've talked about in other videos. Yeah. But the St. James is like a huge indoor sports complex with fields and an ice rink and a water park. I mean, there's like everything there. Yeah, and that's what's so cool about this area is that you're bordering so many other different cities that have all these different amenities that are a short drive. Right. Um, and so you can take advantage of it. I mean, we just talked about Sky Zone in our Springfield video. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, so that is Annandale. It's, I, you know, I think the benefit of it is a convenient location. It's got very attractive, very affordable housing, and they have a nice sense of community there that's sort of like administered and run by the Annandale Chamber of Commerce, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And I, I just love all, and also it's just, there's such a variety of type of homes that you can mm -hmm. buy. And so I think there's something for everybody in Annandale yeah. and there's such a big community and I've had a lot of clients moving there now and it's just, I love going out there. So yeah. totally worth it. Definitely add it into your repertoire where you're looking. Yeah, for sure. So that is it. The, our contact info is coming next. <laughs>